Hello everyone and welcome back to Chasing Adventures. My name is Brian and today we're going to be installing the rear hitch mount on a 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. So let's get right in. Alright, the hitch mount comes in a package. Um, this is the hitch mount, actual hitch mount, and this is the, the, the fascia cover that we're going to be cutting into the bumper and we're going to be putting this on top of that. Um, to cover the hole that we were going to be cutting into the bumper. Um, so make sure you have to get two parts. So one and two. Alright, let's unbox this and see what we have to work with. Okay, so all the hardware is here, but the instructions are missing. I don't know why they're missing. And I believe when you order the fascia cover, it's supposed to come with a template to cut out. That seems to be also be missing too. Interesting. Okay, so I was able to print the template out and I did the, all the artsy fartsy stuff first. But make sure that when you print these out, I noticed, okay, so it says it has to be one inch square to, and to verify size, so I did that. So if you could see, that's one inch right there. Now, when I printed the first ones out, it was actually, and I try to verify it, and see it's actually smaller than one inch. So this wouldn't work. So make sure you guys check the square inch and get the right size to be printed out. All right. And I also printed the, um, the instructions for the actual hitch mounting. Okay, first thing first, we have to remove the tail light. And these are push-in screws. All right, so when you unscrew them, it'll gently pop out. If it doesn't, then you have to hold this part out slightly and it'll pop out. Okay, and then remove the cover. Okay, and there's two bolts here. I believe they're 10 mil. Yep, they're 10 mil. bolts and just gently yank them out. I'll pop right out and you undo this. And there you go, there's your tail light. And we'll do it on the other side as well. Now we come to the wheel well and we have to get rid of these three. Looks like it's a push tab. You can see it better on this side, more lighting. So push tabs are basically you push the center in, no click in, click, click, and then you just get a flat head, gently pry it out. And that's it. So 
So we're underneath the bumper. I have to remove all these push tabs out. So there are a total of seven push tabs. And now all we really need to do is just pry the bumper out. So per the instruction, uh, there should be a little opening to pry it out and there should be a bolt that's holding this bumper as well. But it looks like this is in place and this is already loose. But if you look in here, this looks like it's bolted in there. So I think I need to pry this open. But this instruction doesn't say that. See, it's right next to this, which this is uh, the trunk cover and it's already loose. So that's my only ex explanation why this bumper is not coming out. So let's, yeah, so let's pry this open if I can and see if I could get a bolt, if I could see a bolt in there. So supposedly these push pins, these things will push in when you, when you pry them out and they'll be separated from this piece. After you undo these, all you have to do is just yank them out. And that's what she looks like. And when you take the bumper out, don't force it out and unclip this because this is where your parking sensor wires goes into. And the bumper's right in here. And let's get the template. See, this template is not fitting either. From what i seen, this should match all the way there and line up with this curvature and it should go all the way over there too, but not doing it. And it is one, one inch square. And I did line up all the lines here, so I don't know what's going on. Let me try to figure this out. All right, guys, so this is the one that wasn't quite one inch, but it seems to fit all the way through from edge to edge. And this was printed on a default scale. Uh, this was printed on uh, fit to printable area. So this equals to one inch, but this doesn't, but this actually fits. So I don't want to overcut it, so I'm just going to re-verify with this. Let's see if this will fit on that. Well, after test fitting this, the holes to these holes, they seem to line up. And this looks like it's a little too big, but then again, it's you know, we gotta remember it's, it's curving in, so that's why the paper is a little bit longer, hopefully. But it seems like it will fit. Crossing my fingers, and let's get to cutting. Well, oh, it's finally off. This was not fun. I was first using a drill mold going through this, but I couldn't get a good angle on the top. So I had to just constantly go with the exacto knife over and over and over again, but it's finally out. Now let's try test fitting the fascia. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good fit. Or maybe not.
Oh yeah, because the bumper is laying down like this, so it's forcing the sides to open up, but it looks like it'll fit. But I think I still overcut this area. See those holes? Yeah, it should have been a little smaller. Crap. But hopefully the double side tape will hold on to it. Maybe I could use this template and just cut the holes out or drill out a hole and then we'll go from there. Alright guys, so I put the bumper back on because when I was test fitting this and putting it on to mark the holes, the bumper was kind of flaring it out so I couldn't get an exact measurement so I put the bumper back on and hopefully that'll help from moving around and getting an exact hole that we need. Well, another thing is on the instruction, it's said to measure uh, 0.75 inches and we have to bend this over because this part is hitting this and, we'll, and it won't fit in perfectly. So let's go ahead and do that first. I should have did this first before I took, put the bumper on. But we'll get it working. So make sure you guys bend this first before you put the bumper on. And basically just roll it over. We we'll have space here. Now let's try this. It fits much nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna drill a hole here, but hopefully uh, when you guys order this, your template will be included uh, instead of printing out and cutting slightly bigger than what it is but I mean it's it's doable it's workable so All right, now it's installed. Um, looks pretty good. All right guys, so I started this project at 6.30 and now it's nine o'clock. So I was working on it for two and a half hours just on this little piece, cutting this out and putting this in. Um, <laughs> but rest of the stuff that we're gonna be doing tackling tomorrow morning is pretty much bolt-on so I think that'll be much quicker and easier than modifying this all right so I'll catch you guys in the morning good morning guys it's currently 6 10 in the morning and I'm starting this early because today is also gonna be another hot day yesterday was around 90 mid 90s today it's gonna be up to 91 degrees and currently we are sitting at 58 degrees so let's get going before it gets toasty. Okay, now we're gonna move the bumper beam. But before that, we have to remove the, uh, the antenna for the parking sensor. Okay, so we got three bolts. One, two, three. And they're 14 millimeters. Alright, 
So two bolts and one nut. And it's out. All right, now we have to remove the muffler to, in order for us to get to the heat shield, and that needs to come out as well. So there are two bolts on the side and a rubber hinge, which I got some WD-40 I'm going to spray on. All right, so I got the exhaust out. This is the heat shield that we have to remove. I believe there are, looks like 10 mil. Yep, there are 10 mil. Oh, this thing's heavy. Just kidding. All right, now we have to install the brackets. But if you look in here, there are three of these rubber garments we have to remove. And this will slide in like this. And we bolt it from, from the outside. So those rubber garments has to come off. Now, <clears throat> the passenger side, the right side, doesn't have any brackets here. But if you look over here on the driver's side, there's a bracket here. That's how you know this is the driver's side. And to get these rubber garments off, all you have to do is, I think, just get a plier and just pry it open. That was easy. Oh, the sun's coming up already. And I could feel the heat, so we better hurry up and finish this. Underneath and the back side, we're going to be using this, this bolt and a washer. So I'm going to test fit the beam. I think we should do so it doesn't fit. So I think what we need should we should do first is unloosen them so they're kind of loose. Put this on and then tighten those. Just as I thought. Four here, no washer. Four here, no washer.
Okay, so it fits. Uh, I loosened the bolts in here more loose so it gave me some room to play with. So now I'm gonna tighten them down. So make sure when you put these on, just have them loose in there so you got plenty of room to adjust. When you're done, these are going to be uh, torqued down to 77 foot-pounds and they actually give you the order to tighten. So, so I'm going to follow this. We're going to set it to 77 foot-pounds. All right guys, so everything's torqued to spec. Now all we have to do is run the wires, put the bumper back on, and that should be it. All right, so there was a rubber garment here, so you just took that out. You take that out and you push this through. And this wire is for the four pin connector, which will be tucked underneath here like this. And it'll come out like this. And there should be a mounting bracket to mount this and if you look inside so what you have to do is you have to lift this just a bit and these wires will be exposed right underneath cut these pink tapes and this will come out and that will connect to this module and then I think I'm just gonna mount this right underneath here like that because I am getting a um, 245 65 17 uh, extra spare tire to fit in here and I, I test fit it and it actually works okay so let's get this wiring going I think removing the tire, spare tire, will be easier. Alright, so much better. Okay, so hopefully this won't interfere with the tire and if it does uh, I just have to remove it somewhere else but until that day comes it'll stay right here all right so let's get the t spare tire back in close this up and we'll finish it with that all right and this is the mounting hardware so it's a C-clamp shell style and it looks like that's how it goes in there and this thing closes um, I wish it would have been uh, vertical but it looks like you have to go from underneath when you plug the wires in there and then you're provided with these bolt and a nut, they'll probably come through and tighten down. Okay, all right now we just have to put the uh, heat shield back on, the exhaust back on, the bumper back on, and we're done. Oh yeah, I have to zip tie these, and we're done.
right, so everything is installed. The exhausts are back on, the heat shield's back on, wiring is all done. Just got to put the bumper back on. And before you put the bumper back on, don't forget to connect the parking sensor wires. And we just have to put the uh, push pins from underneath. All right, now on the smaller push pins on the side of the fenders, and how to install these back on is since you press them out, now we're going to push in, see how it pops out, that's how we're going to put in. And then once, we're, once it's in the fender, you just have to tap it in and it locks in. And once those are in place, we're going to put the tail lights back on. So connectors, line up the holes, and don't push. the bolt back on torque it just a tad you don't have to go crazy on here and the cover goes back on I put this side first and then just give it a little push it snaps back in Got the push pins in and push and that's it okay it's all done and it does come with its own Subaru it does it does say Subaru on here Subaru hitch cover but instead of this I got this it's a shackle hitch receiver set by Amble found these on Amazon have pretty good reviews and it also came with these black lock and they have a ton of different colors but I picked red because it is my favorite color so we're just gonna mount this on here unlock this slide it in lock it and we're good to go so after I put the shackle on so this claims it is two inches and I did measure it and it is two inches so I think the Subaru's opening is a little bit bigger than two inch so it moves around a lot so what I got here is this is from my old um, Tacoma setup when I had to hitch it was, it was a bit it wasn't as loose as this but it was kind of loose and it will just rattle around every time I drive so this goes underneath here like so and then this goes on top so what it what it ends up happening is it'll tighten up like that so it won't move so i'm going to mount this as well because this is going to bother me okay so that's on there and besides this shackle actually moving around the actual hitch 
it was pretty solid. So we'll keep that on there. Get you a further outback look. Eh, looks pretty good. All right, guys. So that's the installation of the hitch mount. Um, so it took me two and a half hours yesterday, and it took me about three hours today. So all in all, uh, five and a half hours. That's including, um, you know, filming and setting up the camera and explaining it to you guys. So if I were to do it without the filming, I could probably do it in five hours. And that was also including the um, the printouts for the instructions. All in all, uh, give yourself about a good five to six hours if you're doing this project. And guys, um, I could have probably just done it and just showed you guys the finished product and say, hey, this is what it is. This is how you install it. Here it goes, you know. But this is my first time too. And I want to be really honest with you guys and you know share my mistakes as well. I could look perfect on camera, edit all the crap out, but you know, I want to be realistic as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it's not easy to make. <laughs> and if you did, please hit the subscribe button and um, smash that like button and turn on the notification because the next video we're going to be installing some LEDs. So I have some roof bar that I bought that I'll be mounting and rock lights and along with the ditch lights. So stay tuned for that. And again, thank you very much for joining me. And always remember, keep chasing adventures.